Howdy SEO Moz fans, welcome to a special edition of Whiteboard Friday. Uh, so I wanted to do something a little different for Whiteboard Friday because the, the company's kind of changing. I, I'm changing a little bit. The, um, the things that we've done and accomplished are, are very different to what we focused on in the past. I, I still love talking about SEO tactics and social media marketing tactics and content marketing and email and you know all, all these inbound marketing stuff, but I, I also wanted to give you some sense of kind of what's been going on here. We, we have grown in the last only seven months from about 50 Mazers on the team to, to 100 people. Uh, we're going to be probably hiring our 100th, people, 100th person either as you watch this or in the, in the week or two following that. We're up at 92 as I record this, which is prior to my trip to Ireland. And so this, you know, this, this number is kind of crazy to me. I never, you know, when I started the company, I didn't, there were three of us, right? It was like me and Matt, <laughs> Matt Inman, who's now the oatmeal guy, and, and, and Jillian, my mom. And the three of us would sort of sit in the office and try and, you know, figure out what could we do. And for four years, uh, we didn't really have a whole lot more team members. I think Matt joined in like year one or two of that. And then a few years later, we had four or five people. But it's been a strange and crazy journey. A lot of it is self-analysis and self-reflection, trying to figure out, what, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? What's going well? What's not going well? And so I figured I'd share some of the things, particularly in the last you know, seven months as we've kind of had this very exciting time of, of scaling up the company and uh, taking funding from Brad and Foundry Group and, and having them on the team, um, growing the team dramatically, doing our first acquisition, um, you know, doing some, some interesting sorts of top grading additions to the team, adding in new managers in places and uh, growing almost a layer of management that we never really had before because teams are getting huge and you know 18 people can't report just to Jamie. Um, so this interesting time has brought a few lessons that I want to talk about. So one is that, that productivity and features can win short term and a lot of the time when, when you're building a company, I know I was like this, I, I, I you know, mentor some tech stars companies and talk to a lot of early stage startups and they have this thing too, right? They think that the, the accomplishments I need to make are all inside the product, right? That the product and the features are really what's going what's to build and sell the company. And it, it's true. I, I agree with that um, at, to some degree, but that's a short-term kind of win. What I mean when I say that is that that will not necessarily attract great people to your company. It will not necessarily build a long-term, repeatable, scalable business model. It will not necessarily build up a culture that can hold up to challenges that you almost certainly face as you grow and scale. What will do that are culture and people. And so what I've sort of seen here is that when we have um, tough challenges and we, when we've gone through you know, times like everything's broken, uh, uh, you know, customers are very angry and upset. Um, you know, we did something wrong in the, in the community. We're getting a lot of criticism for a blog post that I wrote or uh, we were getting sued for something that Sarah put on the blog. This was years and years ago. All these types of challenges. We can't raise funding, right? We, we went through these two rounds in 2009 and 2011 where we couldn't raise any money. And the, the thing that has gotten us through those really tough times has not been Oh well, you know the the product's really good, and Open Science Pro is a really good product, or, or SEO Moz Pro is a really good product. Those things certainly help, and they keep customers with us, and they're good things to focus on. But for me, and for a lot of the executive team, what's been the the challenge has been focusing on these two things: culture and people. Let me give you a a perfect perfect example of this. So we had a really crappy outage with uh, with Mozscape, right, with our web crawl. Um, just this, this problem where you know, it was going to be, I think, a week and a half, two weeks late. This was earlier this year. Um, and it turned into being quite late, and it was, it was just really bad, right? Like, you, you know, you, you promise customers right on the calendar. It says, hey, Mosscape will update this day. And then two weeks later, it's like, wh where the hell is that index? Like, what's going on? And in any case, so I was, you know, emailing with the exec team and I'm sort of like, hey, you know, we have poured money and resources. We've hired the best people we could possibly find who've done all sorts of amazing things in their career. We've, 
you know, we're throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month at Amazon, building up more instances. We're running simultaneous indices. What's going wrong? Why are why can't we solve this problem? You know, what's going wrong here? And uh, you know, our our CTO Anthony re replied with. Um, you know, hey, let, let's talk about this in depth. And Anthony and I talked about it. We, I talked to Carr and some of the other team members who are on the big data team. And one of the interesting things that I found digging into the problem was that there was, kind of, there was someone on the team had written some code for deployment that, that kind of failed. And it really, it borked us, like badly. Just really hurt us. And what Anthony said that was fascinating was, it's okay. You know, it, it's okay, not only is it okay, we're gonna work with this guy and we'll get better, but the beautiful thing that I realized, I was so upset when I had sent that email, and then the beautiful thing that I realized is that we had the culture and the people right, because no one on that team threw that guy under the bus. No one, think about that, right? Someone is causing insane, massive amounts of pain to your customers, and no one on the team is going like, hey, you know what, this is this, is this guy's fault, he broke this, he fucked this up. Well, uh, man, like, Oh, I probably shouldn't swear on Whiteboard Friday. I'm sorry about that. Uh, when you see that happening in your company, when you see that, that recovery from challenges, that, that team spirit, that nobody gets thrown under the bus, this isn't one person's fault, this is, hey, we should, you know, we're all on the team together. You know you have the right thing right, and you can fix this. Right? Links, you know, the Mozcape update will come out, it, it'll be okay, customers will be angry, some of them will quit, but they'll come back, we'll build the product up better, six months from now it'll be great, a year from now it'll be the best thing on the internet. It's okay. If the culture's in the right place, this happens. And a, another great example of this, you know, we had a big, um, we had a very big launch that was planned for November of this year, of, of 2012, and it got pushed to probably March or April or something of next year. It's, it's super frustrating, right? It's like, oh my God, we've been waiting for this for so long, and it's such a big project, da, 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 and we really want to get it out the door, but we have to wait these extra you know, four or five months. Oh, just a, a killer. And yet, Adam, right, who's, our, who's our, our chief product officer, and Anthony, our CTO, a Anthony noted that in any other company he's ever been at, and most companies in the world, they would be fighting with each other to show whose fault it was, whose team was responsible for that. But there was none of that at all. There wasn't even a, a tiny bit of that. It's that getting the culture and people right first and then focusing on, on that stuff. This will come over time with great people and great culture. And so that's an exciting thing, but a hard thing to realize. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about, so at some point, sustaining what you've built, right? Keeping consistency, keeping quality up, all that kind of stuff actually is more important than building all the new features, right? So at some point, people will go, hey, I am joining you know, SEO Moz Pro, or I'm joining SurveyMonkey, or I'm joining Unbounce, or whatever that, that product they're subscribing to because I love the service. I love it as it is. I know you want to add new features. I know you want to make it better, but I like this product. Therefore, keeping that product stable and up and reliable and consistent and spending a lot of engineering time and effort and tech ops time and effort and product time and effort, marketing time and effort, customer service time and effort on making that solid actually becomes more valuable to the business than adding the new features, which is like what everybody gets excited about in startup land, right? So you get to that, you know, you sort of have that, that startup scale point and then right about, you know, right about here as you've acquired customers, you've got thousands of people on your platform and they're relying on you, new features becomes a, a great way to keep growing and expanding but you've got to have a solid product. You know, a few weeks ago, when, when you're watching this, hopefully it's a few weeks ago, uh, you know, our ranking stuff was out, uh, our AdWords data was gone, um, that might not even be back yet. Open Site Explorer was having problems, the API was having problems, like just everything, right? The, the whole follower wonk was like, okay, that's working. <laughs> you know, but, but just so many things were broken in our product and there's just engineers scrambling, staying up till two, three, four in the morning, you're getting emails from people on the all staff alias that are like, hey, I won't make it until noon because you know last night was just hell for me. And man, I mean, these are really, really tough times and tough challenges, but it's a realization that you know we can't have 90% of the team working on, you know, the, all the new features and 10% of the team trying to sustain everything else. It's gotta, it's gotta flip. It's gotta be at least a half and half balance, maybe even more towards sustaining. I think that's gonna happen here at Moz, and I might recommend it for other companies too. Um, the third thing, one of the, one of the challenges we've been experiencing with people internally is that 
um, I'm sure you have this in your career too, right? Like I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you get this this problem, right? Like you're you know you're an SEO or you're an inbound marketer, social media marketer, your community manager, you're a content marketer, blogger, whatever you are inside your organization, and you think, well, how do I grow my role in the company? How do I become more important to this company and, and a more valuable person uh, asset to them, and and grow my title and my salary? And that progress is so important to people, especially in sort of you know, first world economies, white collar industries, that kind of stuff. Like that, that progress, seeing that progress is incredibly important. And if you make it such that management, right, going, managing people appears to be the only way to scale up your career, you're going to fail. This is one of the things that Google got so right. So it, right, if you're, if you're Google, and you're an engineer, there's this, there's this whole different track for like non-manager, non-product engineers to grow up. I, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I think it's like, you know, engineer, senior engineer, um, distinguished engineer, and then Google Fellow or something like that, right? And it's very hard to achieve those top levels. I think um, Matt Cutts, who many of you might know because he's the head of the WebSAM team, I believe he's either a distinguished engineer or a Google Fellow. I think he might be a fellow at this point, right? And it's a big, big deal. It's very hard to reach those top levels, obviously lots of salary and stock and recognition comes with that. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing because what you don't want to do is you don't want to encourage uh, uh, you know, an engineer or a customer service person or a marketer or a you know, fantastic designer or a great product person to only have the path of success be management. It shouldn't be that way. Like management is a, a very different kind of discipline, requires a lot of like empathy and therapy and those types of things. And being a fantastic engineer, designer, uh, tech ops person doesn't necessarily correlate with that. Two of my, like, like three actually, of my absolute role models at this company are people who have held management positions and then said, you know what? I don't think, after working with their manager, I don't think this is the right role for me. And they've actually stepped down into individual contributor roles, but stayed here. What, one of the people who did that years ago was Jeff Pollard. He was our, uh, you know, our CTO right after we got funding, after Matt Inman left in, in 2007. And he was our CTO until 2009 when we hired Kate Matsudaira. But he came to me in 08. I remember sitting you know, in, back in our old office above the brewery. And you know, he pulls me out of the office and we're just chatting literally in the hallway because there's no like private office space. And he's like, you know, Rand, I, I think what this team needs and the degree of technology and engineering that we need to get to, I, I'm not the guy to lead this team. Like you need to, we need to go out and we need to find someone. And we did, we have an exhaustive long search. But think about the humility and the, the, the empathy and the just amazing wonderfulness in the person of Jeff, who unfortunately left now. He's at Discuss down in San Francisco and, and, and we wish him the best. But um, to be able to step down from that role and then to work here for another two and a half years under Kate's leadership to kind of grow his own skills just takes amazing self-recognition. The last point I wanted to talk about, this, this challenge of single points of failure. So as, you're, you know, as your company gets bigger, your startup gets bigger, you find that, you know, we, hey, we have that, uh, that one person working on X project, and then they leave, they get sick, they want to work on something else. Uh, their skill set doesn't meet the demands of scale that are reaching up there, and they need, you know, they need some time off. They burnt out. What, whatever it is, those single points of failure, people points of failure, technology points of failure, they'll fail. I, if there's anything I can promise you in startup life, it's not death and taxes. You'll probably live, and your taxes will probably be low because you're not making very much money as a startup usually, but you will have all your single points of failure fail. I promise. It sucks. It's hard. We've had it so many times. And sometimes you don't even know how many single points of failure you have. So, you, you know, you have to be planning and knowing that, that all this kind of stuff is going to happen. Two things on this. Number one, the obvious one, is that you have to build redundancy. And I don't just mean redundancy in terms of like, hey, now we have two people who know how this works, or now we have three people. But, hey, what if our uh, hosting here in Seattle fails can we have some backup system, something that it goes to? Can we have an error message that is empathetic and smart and directs people to the right place and all those things ready to go? So instead of, oh, we didn't even know this could fail and now we have no error message for it. And so, excuse me, so our customers, that's, that's me drinking carbonated beverages. Mm. Uh, so, and I'm going to do some branding for Coke Zero apparently. And 
all these kinds of things just like like will will build up and if you can have those those redundancy points it will help you to absorb some of that and you should plan for failures in in all of those areas it's something that we've been kind of obsessed with lately but you know it's one of those things like in a startup you just always have the oh my god this thing's really painful well but we have these 20 other things that are super painful okay we have to deal with 17 of those before we can get to this one. Oh my god it just got so painful it's moved up to number four and now it's number one yeah, like it, it, that's just how it goes right you're, you're constantly like plugging holes in the dinghy uh, while you're trying to build a battleship around it and the second thing that I would say is that you have to have a like, almost like a, a happiness that is not tied to just how your product's doing or just how your customer service is doing or not uh, or just how your marketing is doing right so I mean marketers have this all the time right where we we build something and we're like oh man this post is really good this video is really good this campaign is really good and I'm gonna launch it and, oh it just it just died you know it got like four retweets and a couple Facebook posts and nothing what what did I do wrong what is this but if you're if your fundamental internal happiness is tied to how you uh, perform on those projects, startup life is going to be very depressing for you. And you're, you are going to burn out, I promise. But if you can tie it to something bigger, particularly if you can tie it to like the longer term success so that you can say, where were we six months ago? Where were we six months before that? Uh, am I better off? Like, you know, uh, is our, our, our traffic doing better? Are our metrics going better? Are we getting better at customer acquisition? Is my position in the company better? Are we better off as a culture? All those kinds of things. Then you go, wow, we have made a ton of progress. And these little failures that happen day to day won't destroy you. And that's, that, that's what you need. You need that, that kind of resolve, that redundancy in people and, and on specific items in the, in the startup customer facing items but you also need the redundancy in your own happiness and I don't know what you guys thought of this whiteboard Friday honestly I mean this is very different for me I haven't tried this before but please let me know with the thumbs let me know with the comments um, you know if you want to see more tactical SEO stuff I can stick to that I'm I'm happy to do this format maybe once every few months too and I uh, yeah I really look forward to seeing you if, if you do like this I've got a um, I've got a blog where I write much more about this kind of stuff at moz.com slash rand uh, so you can check that out too. All right, everyone, take care. We'll see you next week for another edition of Whiteboard Friday.